Hey guys, today we're going to look at an ancient Hindu architect called Vishwakarman and how everything we know about him is wrong. This 900-year-old carving shows Vishwakarman with multiple heads and holding various weapons. This is the standard explanation we get, but that's pure nonsense. If he has multiple heads, then how come the center head looks older while the other two heads show younger faces? And look at the weapon on the left. It's not a weapon at all. This head is actually looking into this device. Now, who is this Vishwakarman? According to ancient Indian texts, Vishwakarman was the architect who engineered great cities like Dwaraka and ancient temples with insane perfection. An architect does not need weapons. So what is this device he's looking through? He's using a theodolite. Now, what is a theodolite? Have you ever wondered why you always see civil engineers standing and looking through something? That is a theodolite. It is similar to a small telescope. And look at the similarity of the modern theodolite and how the engineer is looking through it and how the ancient theodolite is shown and how his face is clearly looking through it. It is a perfect match. But what is the purpose of a theodolite? It is used to make sure that an area is perfectly flat or horizontally leveled before construction starts. In real life, most areas have horizontal differences and how do you make it flat? On one end of the site, you have the theodolite and on the other end, you must place a leveling rod or a leveling staff which has markings. This is exactly what we see in the other hand in the statue. This is the leveling rod. Of course, the markings are gone now because of erosion, but it is quite visible in other carvings of Vishwakarman. For example, it's clearly visible in this statue. This is from the Sun Temple at Modara, built around 1000 years ago. Other statues as well show clear markings. I had initially thought it was just a simple ruler or a line gauge, but now it's clear that Vishwakarman was using a leveling rod and a theodolite to survey construction sites. If you look at ancient temples, one of the things we marvel about is how they were able to achieve such flatness of the ground before they started construction. Even on mountaintops, they were able to create perfectly flat plain and then build temples. Now we can fully understand how they achieved this. The ancient builders carved the details quite clearly. This is not a multi-headed god. They are showing multiple people working at the same site. One guy is looking through the theodolite, the other guy is in charge of the leveling rod, and the older guy with the beard is the supervisor. Another thousand year old statue shows the same iconography with two younger guys on the side holding the same devices uh, with the older guy in the middle. This is quite clear how they have carved Vishwakarman. Remember how civil engineers make 3D drawings. These three faces could be indicative of that as well. This is very interesting because we have always thought that Vishwakarman was one person, but perhaps it denotes a team of ancient engineers, just like how a team of engineers works on a site today. And I have been researching Vishwakarman for many months now, and I have seen various combination of faces in ancient temples. Sometimes all young faces, sometimes all older faces, and sometimes a combination of both young and old. Okay, so I have shown you how Vishwakarman achieved perfect horizontal level in the x-axis, but how did they manage to achieve 
vertical perfection in the y-axis. Because when you examine ancient Indian structures, it's amazing how you never see any tilted monuments. Temple walls do not have any tilt at all, unless the builders wanted a tilt or a slope. Every angle was built perfectly. Now, what do we use to measure vertical perfection today? This is called a plumb bob. It is the shape of an onion or a top, like a spinning top, with one half looking like a bulb and the other half with a pointed end. And that's exactly what we find in Vishwakarman's hand. I have seen many, many carvings and it's unbelievable. And what he's holding looks exactly like a plumb bob. What is more surprising, today we have mechanized plumb bobs. We can push a button with one finger and the string comes out. But they must have used the same button system in ancient times as well. Look at his finger. Why is he shown with one finger on a specific spot? I'm sure some will argue that this device is just a pot of water or something basic. If so, why does he have to use one finger in this position? This detail is not shown in this carving alone. I have seen carving after carving. It clearly appears that he's using one finger, like how we push a button today. And if you look at this device, he's holding in the same hand. This is just a long cylinder and see how this is going into the ground. This is a soil probe which detects the strength and nature of soil before we start construction. Today we use a soil probe which is exactly like this, a long cylinder which goes into the ground and then we can examine the soil sample. We have archaeological evidence that soil tests were constructed 1,000 years ago. We uh, have inscriptions proving this. The Brahudiswara temple in Tanjavur was constructed at its site after doing extensive soil tests in various areas. And this location was chosen because the soil was very good. In his other hand, we can see a beaded mala or rosary, which was used to calculate the sacred geometry using number 108. I have explained the importance of 108 and how it was used in Indian architecture in a different video. Okay, now we saw everything about pre-construction tools, but what about the construction itself? How did they construct these impossible structures? The answer lies in what Vishwakarman is holding in his other hands. He is shown holding a strange device which looks very advanced. It appears to have several twists and turns. It must be some sophisticated technology we still do not have. Think about the human mind. We are only able to recognize that this is an ancient theodolite because we have reinvented the theodolite in modern times. Otherwise, we will think this is just a knife or something like that. We can only understand what we have already seen. So if we have not invented an advanced instrument like this yet, we won't be able to understand this. But maybe in the future, someone will create such a device and then we will recognize what this really is. While some carvings show this device with twists and turns, in other statues, he is shown holding a dome-like device. But strangely, almost all these devices have a split bottom. They don't have one rod, but two split rods resembling a tuning fork. Today, we have just begun to understand the power of vibrations and sound. But is it possible that the ancient builders were far more advanced than us and were using resonance devices. Were they able to manipulate sound and construct these extraordinary temples? I have just started to uncover the secrets 
of the ancient architects called Vishwakarman. It's very hard to differentiate Vishwakarman and the creation god Brahma because they are both depicted with similar features in many temples and in ancient Hindu texts as well. The name Vishwakarman itself means the one who created the world. Is it possible that they were the original group of architects who engineered the entire human civilization? Is this why we were able to build incredible structures like the Kailasa Temple? Our current understanding of ancient Indian history is very limited because we are looking down on the ancient builders. We are assuming that they were less sophisticated than we are. So people automatically dismiss ancient devices as simple meaningless objects. If they see a depression, they will say it is a spoon. And if it's blunt, they will say it is a weapon. So what do you think? Did ancient builders use advanced technology in India? Or was everything constructed with primitive tools? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell button to get all the updates. Please give this a thumbs up and do share it with your friends. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.